Hello everybody and welcome back to Fujit Blitz and today we're going to look at what is possibly the world's sickest contest. Wow. Imperial Japan during the 1930s and later during the 1940s, the war years, was quite a brutal place to be. With the rise of nationalism taking a dominant role, <laughs> mainly numerous civilian prime ministers were assassinated by militarists eventually leading to the overall political dominance by the army and the navy, that brought in an ultra-national outlook that literally permeated throughout the whole of Japanese society. Throughout the same period, the Japanese military training was even more brutal, with beatings being absolutely common, even for the slightest of infractions. According to many of the accounts by Japanese soldiers, during training, recruits were indoctrinated into the concept that the Japanese were looked down upon by the West and others, leading to the phrase Fukuku Kihoi, rich nation, strong army. Not only that, but the Japanese military had also assumed and basically tried to modernize the ancient samurai code of Bushido. Now, Bushido was effectively in the samurai period akin to what the West had as chivalry. But with the adoption of state Shinto, the code was slightly warped. Now, state Shinto is whereby the emperor of Japan is seen as a living god. And under Bushido, the Japanese military taught their recruits that it was their duty to die for the emperor and to never surrender, as surrendering was, well, dishonorable. This eventually led to the Japanese holding nothing but utter contempt towards any who surrendered, believing this was both cowardly and dishonorable. This indoctrination, uh, it coupled with the brutality of military life in Japan during this period, had a dehumanizing effect upon the Japanese, whereby they would consider non-Japanese to be below them. Simple as that, really, especially the Chinese. And this would be something that would become very clear during the Second Sino-Japanese War. The Japanese, therefore, held nothing but utter contempt towards the overall Chinese population, considering them both inferior and without honor. The Chinese were so contemptible to the Japanese that the world's most bizarre and what I consider them the most truly awful of all competitions was eventually to take place. The contest, which was first reported by the Osaka Minichi Simba newspaper in 1937, detailed a contest between two Imperial Japanese officers, Second Lieutenant Tashiki Mukai and Second Lieutenant Toshui Noda. According to contemporary accounts, these two officers had conceived the idea to hold a contest to be the first person to behead 100 people with a sword. This was apparently en route to Nanking, the then relocated capital of China. The Japanese media at the time reported the contest with unbelievable zeal, even going so far as to claim that both had surpassed the initial goal of 100, Mukai 106 and Noda on 105, that it was impossible to ascertain who had won and got to the 101st. Not to worry, they increased the contest to 150. Not only that, but the newspapers at the time even went so far as to describe the competition as being honourable, remarkable and heroic. Many Japanese historians, most notably nationalists or negatists, those are the people who say that it never happened, that they're deniers, argued the contest was just propaganda and that no such thing ever took place, despite Second Lieutenant Noda himself stating that he had killed many people via the sword. But he'd only killed four or five people in actual hand-to-hand -hand combat. The majority he killed were not in hand-to-hand. -hand. 
Without any sense of irony, Noda stated the following. I didn't kill more than four or five in actual combat. Most of the time, after we had captured a trench, we would call the Chinese to come out to us, and they were so stupid, they would literally rush towards us. We then lined them up and cut them down from one end to the other. I was praised for killing 100 people, but you must realise that the majority I killed was like this. It was not in hand to hand. Yes, we had the contest, but it was no big deal. Noda's comments clearly show the contempt how towards both POWs and the Chinese, whereby killing those who surrendered was no big deal. And he was only proud of the ones the four or five killed in actual combat. Both men were eventually tried for war crimes after the war and executed in China. Interestingly, the families of both individuals brought defamation claims in 2003 requesting compensation. The case was eventually dismissed primarily due to the fact that the time limits had expired. But the judge did hold that the contest did occur. It was not fabricated by the media and was not some form of propaganda scoop. Although it was difficult whether or not to ascertain that the hundred or so had actually been beheaded. This, for me, is by far the strangest and most contemptible contest to have ever taken place in the 20th century. Despite the media at the time claiming this to be heroic and honourable, it was by far the absolute opposite. In my opinion, there is absolutely nothing honourable or heroic in killing unharmed civilians or prisoners of war, no matter how many times you try to spin it. Hi, been Fujit. That has been a brief overview of what I consider to be the world's bizarrest of contests. By all means, comment and everything below. Uh, if you haven't yet subscribed, please do so. It's a nice thing to do and, wow, it makes me happy. And until the next time, stay safe out there, have fun and be happy.